Hello guys, welcome to another video. Today we are talking about the operators in Java. So, based on whether you're using digits, characters, or strings, you can choose on how you want to manipulate your own data. You can perform mathematical operations such as addition and subtraction. You can join words together to make sentences. You can also grab particular words out of large sentences. So here, you, as we can see, we have all the operation types like arithmetic operators, logical operators, unary operators, assignment operators, ternary operators, bitwise operators, and relational operators. So now we're going to talk about the arithmetic operators. These operators are used to perform arithmetic opera operations. So we're going to write int number 1 equals 5 and int number 2 equals 8. So the variables we're going to be using is sum, difference, product, quotient, and remainder. We're going to write sum equals number 1 plus number 2. Difference equals number 2 minus number 1. Product equals number 1 multiplied by number 2. Quotient equals number 2 divided by number 1. And remainder equals number 2 percent sign number 1. This is a mod operator. And what a mod operator does here is that it just makes it look for a specific thing. In this case, it's the remainder, and it only works for the remainder. I'll be showing you guys what the result will be in the equips after the when the we finish up with this PowerPoint. So now we have our logical operators. The first one here we have the double and we have the double Emerson sign, which is called the logical and operator. This checks whether conditions on both sides of the operator are true. It returns true if both are true. If one of the conditions is false, then it returns false. An example of this is does my name start with IC double Emerson sign? Does my name end with pulse? The line double lines is represented as the logical or operator. This checks whether one of the conditions on Two sides of the operator are true and returns true if any one of the condition is true. If both of the conditions are false, then it returns false. An important point to remember here is that the, if the first expression is already true, it does not check the second expression before returning true. An example here is, does my name start with icy or does my name end with pulse? Now we have our unary operators. We have the unary plus operator, the unary negative operator, the increment operator, the decrement operator, and the logical not operator. So the unary plus operator just converts bytes, shorts, character type data into integers. The unary negative operator converts a positive value into negative values. And the increment operator is used for increasing the value of the variable by one. The decrement value is used for decreasing the value of the variable by one. And the logical not operator flips the value of boolean to its opposite value for instance, if A equals true, then exclamation mark A returns false. Now we have our assignment operator. There are many different types of assignment operators, so let's look at the more simple ones. An example is A equals 4. The operator that combines arithmetic operators with assignment operators is known as the compound assignment operator. What this compound assignment operator does is it just um if they just make it so that they have a short form to do the same work and they're more efficient than the longer form an example is plus equals minus equals and multiplication equals so now i'll show you guys some examples of the compound assignment operator and we have the a plus five which is a equals a plus five b minus equals five which is b equals b minus five and we have our C multiplied equals 10, which is C equals C multiplied by 10. We have D divided by equals 5, which means D equals D divided by 5. And E percent sign equals 10, which means E equals to E remainder of E divided by 10. So now we have our next one, which is the ternary operator. So what this does is if you have a simple condition and you want to check it, and keep your code as simple and easy to read as possible. You use ternary operators. An example here is int number one equals five and number two equals 10. 
Then we're gonna write string results and end it off with our with our ending line. So we're gonna write result equals to parentheses number one is greater than number two. And then we're gonna put a question mark outside the parentheses and then double quotation marks. We write number one is greater than number two variable end of double quotation marks. Two number one in double quotation marks, number one is less than number two variable end of double quotation marks. So now we have our next one, which is the relational operators. These relational operators are used to check the relationship between variables. You can check if two variables are greater than, less than, or equal to each other. You can check if an object is an instance of a particular type of class. For instance, if you have a BMW object, you can check if it's an object of the car class. So now we're talking about the converting decimal numbers to binary digits. You divide the number by two, then you save the remainder of the quotient and divide that by two, then you save the remainder. Then you keep repeating the th third and fourth steps until your quotient is zero. Then you take all the remainders you saved and write them from left to right, right to left. Um, so if you wrote 10, the binary value of 10 is 1010. Now we're going to move on to the bitwise operators. And in the bitwise operators, we have our bitwise and operator, the bitwise or operator, and the bitwise exclusive or, which is XOR. So the bitwise operators are usually used to perform operations on the actual binary bits of a number. So now we write bitwise and operators as um, the Emerson sign, the bitwise or operators as one line, and the bitwise XOR as a caret sign. The bitwise shift operators include the left shift, which is double, which is represented as a double less than sign, the right shift, which is represented by a double greater than sign, and the unsigned right shift, which is represented as the triple greater than sign operator. So the three right here are shifted operators, the um, left shift, the right shift, and the unsigned right shift. So now we'll move on to our eclipse. So here we have our eclipse open. I, have, I made a class called the automatic operators, and I've written down, written down when I was in that slide. As you can see here, we have number one equals 25, number two equals to five, and we made our variable sum, difference, product, quotient, and remainder. Uh, we made sum equals to number one plus number two, difference equals number one minus number two, product equals number one multiplied by number two, and quotient equals number one divided by number two. The remainder equals number one percent sign number two. And then we're gonna print out the line sum is plus sum. We're gonna also print out difference is plus difference. We're gonna print out product is plus product. We're gonna print out quotient is plus quotient. Remainder is plus remainder. And if we click run, we get sum is 30, correct? 25 plus 5. Difference is 20. 25 minus 5 is 20. Product is 125, correct, 25 multiplied by 5. Quotient is 5, 25 divided by 5 is 5. And there's no remainder, so the remainder is just 0. So now we're going to go on to the logical operators. Um, here we have our two variables that we're going to be using. The number 1 equals 65 and number 2 equals 97. So we're going to make number 1 equal 82 and number 2 equals 97. We're going to print out the line, both conditions are true. Well, no, this doesn't equal 82, but it's just if, if number 1 equals 82, then um, this line will be printed out. Both conditions are true. But if not, it'll say only one condition is true. And then here we have system that dot print line, one or more conditions is true. Our number 1 value is 65 and our number 2 value is 67. So if it's not true, um, it'll go to this one, but if it is true, no, this is an or sign, but if it is true, it won't consider this one at all. So now if we click run, we will get only one condition is true. That is correct because, uh, number one does not equal 82 and one or more condition is true. That is also correct here because... Only one condition is correct, and that is if number one equals to 65, not number two equals 67. So now we have our the increment operator, the decrement operator, the logical knot. 
So here we have uh, in UNA Plus, uh, this is ASCII. Um, and the other one I based it off of ASCII, just to make that clear. Um, and the UNA Plus, uh, we're going to write int apple pie equals plus jelly. Up here is our, uh, this is what jelly is in the ASCII value. Char jelly equals A, and A in ASCII is 97. So it will just be into apple pie equals plus 97 basically. And then we have, we're going to print out the line ASCII is plus apple pie. And now we're going to write the uh, unary negative. So we're going to write number one equals number nine and number one equals minus number one. Now we're going to print out the words uh, system. Unary negative shows plus number one. This right here is a variable because of the int. And over the increment operator, we're going to write the uh, int number 2 equals 44. And the result equals number 2 plus plus. What will happen here is that the result here will become 44. That's what the result equal to. And then number 2 is going to be added by 1 because number 2 is being overwritten to, to 45. And the result stays the same as 44. So now we're going to write increment result equals 2 plus result. And inside memory number 2 equals to number two. Now we're gonna write um, the other way around where the plus comes first. Uh, int number three equals 44. And then we're gonna write result equals to plus plus number three. So what happens here is that the plus sign gets more, uh, becomes the result and the number three also becomes the result. So the new value of number three is 45 and the result is 45 as well. So now we're going to print out the line increment result equals two and the inside memory equals number three plus number three. So now we're going to look at the decrement operator. What happens here is that the result will equal to 43, but number four's new value will be 42 because you're subtracting one and number four is being overwritten to 42. Now we're going to make the new variable number five equal to number 47. We're going to make the result minus minus number five where the result will equal to 46 and number 5 will equal to 46. Then we're going to print out the line decrement result equals 2 plus the result. And we're also going to write down inside memory number 5 plus number 5. Now for the logical not, the boolean, uh, we're going to make the boolean 1 false. And then we're going to put the boolean 1 equals exclusion like boolean 1. What happens here is that it's going to go from false to true. So the new value of boolean 1 is true. So we're going to print out the line new value of boolean 1 equals plus boolean 1. So now if we print this out, we get ASCII shows 97. That's what I said. The unary negative shows negative 9 because it turned into a negative. Uh, now we have the 42. Sorry, yeah. We have the 44 because you get added by 1. That's the result. Number 2 becomes the new 41. And the inside number number is 45. Then we have the decrement value, 43, changed to uh, 43. And then we're going to have the, um, the inside memory number be 42. And for the dec in the second one, where the, um, where 47 got stretched, minus one so that turns into 46 the inside memory is also 46 for the reason i said and the logical not equals to true because the value got flipped now we have our assignment operator we've written down the int a equals to six and then a equals to a plus five which is shortened down to a plus equals five so the new value of a equals to 11 now we have the minus equals to operator. We'll make the B value of B 10. Now we're going to do B minus equals 5. The same theorem, sorry, same rule applies here. It's just going to be B minus 5. Substitute the value, 10 minus 5. The new value of B is now 5. Now we have multiplication. We're going to make C equals to 15. So it's going to be C multiplied by 10. The new value of C is 150. And then we have the int d where we're going to divide 30 by 6 and the new value of d will equal to 5. For the remainder we're going to have 55 then percent sign 10 
So now the new remain the remainder is five. So e's remainder so e equals to five, and then we're just gonna print out this is the value of a, b, c, d, and e. So now if we run it all, we get that it equals the numbers as I said. Oops, that's the wrong one. My bad. Uh, let me uh, get it up real quick. Yeah, it says that the value of a equals to eleven. This is the value of b five. This is the value of C, 150, the value of D, 5, and the value of E, 5. So now we have the next one. All right, so now we have the ternary operators. We're going to make number 1 equals to 5 and number 2 equal 10. So now we write result equals number 1 is less is greater than number 2. And then we're going to put it in double quote. We're going to have to put a question, question mark before it. And we're also going to write... In double quotation marks, number one is greater than number two. And of double quotation marks, two, number two is greater than number one, variable, end of line. And we're going to print out the words, this is the answer plus result. What will happen here is that the number one is less than number, sorry, is less than number two. Uh, the number two is greater than number one in this case uh, will happen because that's the only one that's true So now if we click run we get this is the answer number two is greater than number one variable because like I said um, The number two is greater than number one Because that's the only true statement here So now we got to go to the next one, which is the relational operators um, I'm gonna write here Int Cairo equals 76, 76, 76, and int USA equals 67, 67, 67, sorry, 67, 67, 667. And then we're going to write Boolean result, making the default value false. So result equals to Cairo is greater than USA. Now we're going to print out the line checking if Cairo greater than USA. And then we're going to add the result. And we're going to write the same sentence for every single one, except for the result equals Cairo USA Chi result equals Cairo equals USA and the result equals to Cairo exclamation mark equals USA. So now we have our result equals to Cairo uh, is less than USA. Now we're gonna also write result equals to Cairo less than or equal to USA. We're gonna do uh, greater than or equal to as well. I made a typo here. I meant to do this. This is, less, is greater than and less than to USA. And then we're gonna write result equals to Cairo equals USA. We're gonna print here the double equal sign instead of the uh, instead of the um, the less than equals to and things like that. So now we're gonna write result equals to Cairo exclamation mark equals USA. So this will just flip the value around. So now if we run it. We get, oh, I need to save it real quick. And we're going to run it. And we get the, that Cairo is less than USA. That is false. Checking is Cairo l less than USA. That is true. Now we're going to check is Cairo less than or equal to U USA. Very much true. Uh, now we're going to do, is checking if Cairo is greater than or equal to USA, that is false. Is Cairo equal USA, that's false. Is Cairo not equal to USA, that is true. So now we have the next, and that next one is our bitwise operators. And we're gonna write down, um, we're gonna make our variables first. And our variables, variables are going to be number one, which equals the 10, number two, which equals the two, and the result variable. So the bitwise AND operator returns ones in each position for which the corresponding bits of both operands are ones. And a one bit if one bit if both operands are ones and zeros for all others. So 13's binary is 1101. Six binary Amberson sign is 0110 and fours is 0100. So now we're gonna write Result equals to number one, Amberson sign number two. And what happens here is it's gonna write out number one bitwise and Amberson sign number two plus the result. 
So now with the bitwise or operator, which is one or, or sign, not two, it returns ones in each bit position for which the corresponding bits of either or both operands are ones. We're gonna also write result equals to number one or number two. And we're gonna write number one bitwise or number two plus the result. So the bitwise XOR operator, which is the caret sign, returns ones in each bit positions for which the corresponding bits of either or both, not both operands are ones. So if we write number one is, sorry, number one, caret sign number two, what happens is that it's gonna be ones. So if we take 13 for example, and four, it returns ones in each position for which the corresponding bits of either, but not both operands are ones. So it'll be a one here, a one here, a zero here, and a one there, which makes it 13. So um, now we're gonna print out Net number bit one bitwise XOR caret sign number two plus that result. And we're also going to write the bitwise not operator, which is a squiggling line right here that inverts the bits of its operands. For an example, 1101 equals to 0010, i.e., individual bits invert. So ones become zeros and zeros become ones. So we're gonna write num result equals to squiggly line number two. Number two is, is um number two zeros and ones will be inverted. And now we're gonna do right shift to number equals to sorry, I mean uh sorry, we're gonna write inverted number two plus result. And now we have the left shift, which shifts the bits to the left and fills the voids with zeros. For example, if this is 10 right here, it can be nine, it can be anything, but since right now it's 10 on the other side of this one right here, it'll shift 10 bits. If this was eight, it'll shift to eight bits and it goes like that. So now we have the right shift, which shifts the bits to the right and fills the voids with zeros. The sign of the number decides the values of the left bit. All the integers are signed in Java, but it's fine to use the double greater than sign for your negative numbers. The operator double greater than sign uses the sign bit leftmost bit to fill the trailing position after the shift. If the number is negative, then one is used as a filler, and if the positive, if it is positive, then zero is used as a filler. For example, if binary representation of a number is with 10, one, sorry, one zero, one zero zero, the right shifting it by two using double greater than sign will make it one, 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 one. So for an example here, we have result equals number one, double greater than sign number one, and double greater than sign one. We're gonna print out a right shifted number and then plus result. So the unsigned right shift is the same as the right shift. However, it changes left mode digits to zero. It fills the zeros irrespective of the sign of the number and one bit of both operands are ones. So now we're gonna print out result equals to number one, triple greater than sign two. And now we're gonna print out unsigned right shift plus the result. And now we're gonna run this. And as you can see, the bitwise and operator changed to a two, the or operator changed to a 10, the XOR changed it to an eight, the inverted number is negative three, the shifting number is 10,240, the right shifted number is 5, and the unsigned right shift is 2. Anyways, guys, thank you guys for listening. I'll see you guys in the next one, and goodbye.